better. You can borrow it. Hello there. Today is going to be a fantastic day. I have a ton of stuff to do. Um, we have a company coming in tomorrow and today is going to be like prep day. So I've decided, finally wised up after being here on this planet for 44 years, that it is far better to do things in advance than wait until the last minute. Who knew? <laughs> so. Today I am um, I'm going to be making like some desserts in advance and uh, marinating some chicken and things like that. Throwing some stuff in the freezer. I got ahead of the game last night and I made bread dough and um, put that in the freezer. And I did a slow cooker pork shoulder to make pulled pork sandwiches. So um, because we plan on doing things with our company. It's my husband's brother and his and his wife coming with their kids. And so uh, we're going to go do some fun Florida-type adventures while they're here. So I don't have time to make these really amazing scratch-made meals while we're having fun. So if I take all of that time to do some prep work in advance, then there's no stress. And we still eating good, y'all. <laughs> we still eating good. So... Anyway, I gotta brush my teeth because that needs to be done. It always needs to be done, right? And I put on a little bit of concealer so that I look alive and awake even though I really don't feel it today. And um, we're gonna go get this party started. Y'all, we're gonna trust God and chill today. That That is gonna be the theme of the day is trust God and chill. It's my reminder in big letters, big red letters. So, um, yeah, let's go head to the kitchen after I take care of this <laughs> and go roll up our sleeves and get this party started. All right, bye. I am so excited about today because y'all, we are gonna be cooking some really good stuff. We have got company coming to town and they're staying for four days. <laughs> I need to have a game plan here. You always need a game plan whenever people are coming to visit. So today we're going to pull together some recipes so that we can make life a little easier and we can show our company a little extra love because our time is not divided. So let's go ahead and we're going to make some homemade bread and just be able to put this dough right in the freezer so that we can have it rise whenever we want and stick it in the oven then we're going to make some pulled pork make to make pulled pork sandwiches to go on this homemade bread yeah. it was the best <laughs> meal ever um yes. on top of that we're going to make a couple of cakes and preform some hamburger patties and just get everything ready to go so we are solid on having company and having less stress in our lives. Okay, so let's sit tight and just keep watching this video. It's going to be so good. Get your notebook out. Let's take some notes. Okay, I have found the most simple and easy bread recipe that a friend shared with me, and I'm going to link it to you in the description. That is from uh, Pinterest. So I will, and I'll show you, it's, it's just a few ingredients, honestly, really, really easy to do. But I went ahead and I kneaded this bread for five minutes and made sure that the gluten was active and it's, the dough is good and stretchy. Um, this recipe will make two loaves of bread. And so what you see here is I've divided it up with a pastry cutter, uh, which is also a really good shovel. And 
I'm gonna kind of form it into a log shape and I'm gonna wrap it in some saran wrap because this is going in the freezer. Uh, your dough is probably gonna expand a little bit even when it's in the freezer because it takes a little while for um, the dough to freeze. So even while it's still warm, it's gonna expand a little bit and that's okay. You can divide it up. The saran wrap made it really easy to get out of the freezer. So I've rolled up both of these logs of dough and I'll put it in a Ziploc bag and I'm gonna title it with a uh, permanent, mar permanent marker and put the date on it because if I decide I wanna let it stay in the freezer for longer than, you know, just for what I needed it for, if I, need, if I wanna do it farther in advance, then I know what the expiration date is on it um, and what it is in the bag because it could be pie crust or it could be pizza dough but this is bread dough so here you go now i'm going to go ahead and put this out in the freezer in the garage and i like to lay it flat so that it holds its form and it'll be ready for use whenever i need it So I bought this pork shoulder from Aldi for under $20. I roasted it slow in the slow cooker overnight at 250 degrees. And I just used seasoned salt, garlic, and shredded onions. And it's perfect. Okay, so I've got this bowl right here that I'm gonna use to put pulled pork in and I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this done so that whenever I want to after it's frozen and we've been on a long day of adventuring together as a family all I have to do is stick this in the oven <laughs> and it can defrost and cook and whatever and it's already fully cooked so you're just warming it up you could literally throw it in the microwave if you wanted to but I need a microwave friendly and an oven friendly dish I get these at thrift store, Goodwill, garage sales, whatever, for a couple bucks. Um, and I use these to put food in the freezer with. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this um, pulled pork in there and then stick it in the freezer. And yeah. Gonna leave some of this the big pieces of fat out um, because I don't think anybody's gonna really want to eat that but it's already done its job with flavoring the meat and making it tender and all the things but if I see big hunks I'm just gonna kind of leave it in this um, this broth here if I had enough of this broth I would probably can it but I don't use um, pork broth a whole lot I usually use chicken and beef. There's another big piece right there. Y'all, this made a lot of meat. And I only paid 20 bucks for this big hunk of meat. And so that and with the homemade bread, I'm gonna serve this uh, pulled pork with some barbecue sauce and um, on Texas toast with the homemade bread that I made, the bread dough that I made in advance. Y'all, it's gonna be so good. And I've done this in advance and it's gonna be a wonderful scratch made meal that I'm not gonna really have to worry about. So anything I can do to save myself time, I'm definitely all for it. All right, I'm fishing around for some pieces that I may have forgotten about because I don't want to leave, I don't want to leave anybody behind. Oh, 
Oh, that is not a good piece. All right, see, it's still making, it's still like the juice is soaking down to the bottom. So I don't really need to add any more juice. I think that would be too much. So I'm gonna cover this in saran wrap and in foil and um, write what it is on the top with the date, just in case I decide to leave it in there longer. Um, and then, y'all, this is, this is a lot of meat for eight people. Yeah, I think this will be just enough, just enough for eight people. So anyway, on to the next project. Okay, so I had to run a little errand. We're here at Public Screen Wise, and I'm going to also be going to the seafood market because I'm gonna make, we're gonna have poke bowls one night for dinner. I discovered one night for our home church group where I usually feed around uh, 15 people that poke bowls, when you have the right kind of fish, are actually a very, economic way to be able to feed a large group of people and everybody likes it because they get to make their own so it's very little work you're just cubing up some fish and making a pot of rice basically that's it um, everything else maybe you have to dice some cucumbers or whatever but everything else is really self-explanatory so let's go inside the grocery store go gather these little things and then off to the seafood market select a really good mango except for maybe like a feeling this one feels like a pretty good one and I think I only need one so I'm gonna just get one Having a seafood market that becomes your favorite is a must if you're living near the Gulf Coast. Cox Seafood has always been such a wonderful place for me to go and get fresh seafood that's locally caught and hey, resourced, good, and I just absolutely love it. They are also very friendly and very accommodating, so if you're ever in the Tampa area, I suggest definitely go to visit this place. You will absolutely love it. Their market just is second to none as far as quality goes and um, just being incredibly helpful. As a girl who grew up in South Louisiana, I recommend it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start on my, I'm gonna go ahead and start on my next project, which is making two cakes, making cookie dough batter, and also making a homemade chocolate frosting. So I have two cakes, I have to make one for church tonight, and then I'm doubling the recipe because it's my nephew's birthday, it was yesterday, and they arrived tomorrow, so we're still gonna celebrate when he gets here, and he's gonna get a homemade chocolate cake. So, might as well kill two birds with one stone and just enjoy eating a lot of chocolate this weekend. So, I've got all my ingredients out that I'm gonna need for this particular recipe, and so I'm gonna put you guys in a place where you can see what it is that I'm doing, 
and we're gonna go ahead and knock this out. I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven. I've got my recipe all written out here. I will link this in the description to the Pinterest pages that I found these recipes on. And um, so that way you can get what you need if you wanna duplicate this. This chocolate cake, y'all, is so, so good. It, um, it is the most moist, rich chocolate cake from scratch, and it's very inexpensive to make. Um, and to get to, I, I just make it a, a glass casserole dish. That's it, and it comes out beautifully every single time, and it tastes better than a, a box mix. So, anyway, I will go ahead, and we're gonna go ahead and get started on the cake batter first. I'm gonna preheat my oven, and then we'll take it from there. Trying to get all situated here. All right, so the first thing that we are gonna need is about four cups of flour. And usually you're supposed to mix your dry ingredients in first, and then you're wet. Oh, I forgot to get the cocoa powder out. Put that in a second. One. Two. sure gonna have four. I'm probably gonna have to refill this. Yep. I gotta refill this. Always make sure that you have backup. Don't wait until you see that your ingredients are all the way empty before if you do a lot of baking. Um, I make sure that I have several sacks of flour. I like this King Arthur brand um, flour. And anyway, so usually Walmart has a pretty good price on that. Okay, so I'm gonna level off those scoops. Okay, and now I can put my flour somewhere else. Give myself more counter space. Okay. We have, we'll go ahead and do the sugar next. So we're going to need four cups of sugar. cups of sugar then we need two of the three-fourths cups which I don't even know if that is a math but that's okay all right um I'm gonna put and I get the big huge container that looks to be about three-fourths put that in there put that Now I'm gonna cover this back up and I don't need this anymore. That in there. Okay, now I need, um, let's see, baking powder. This is baking powder. And I just got a brand new thing of that because the one I just had a little while ago, it was getting clumpy on me. I don't like that. All right, so four teaspoons of that. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now I'm 
Now we need baking soda, three teaspoons of baking soda. And I just bought a brand new container of baking soda. Oh, that's not gonna work. <laughs> Trying to make this little bitty area fit, but that does not work. Um, okay. One, two, three. All right. So we got three of that. Now we need salt, just regular table salt. Two teaspoons. Got to balance out the flavors. One, two. All right, so now I'm just gonna put on my mixer on stir and get all that kind of like, just mixed together. You don't wanna turn it on too high because then all your stuff's gonna go flying everywhere. All right, so that's good. Um, oh, I need eggs. Okay, so I am gonna also need two cups of milk. So I'm gonna put it back on stir. Do one cup. That's exactly a cup. Put that in there. I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, I need to pick up my sugar. And then, uh, <laughs> these are the things that happen in real life whenever you're trying to do this on your own. Okay, so now I'm gonna have one cup of oil. Okay, that is a heaping cup of oil. Okay, I'm gonna turn this back to stir. Gently move it. Alright, now I'm gonna get the egg. Okay, we need we need four eggs. Here goes the first one. One egg. of vanilla. One, two, three, four. All right, now this I believe the next step is like the secret ingredient, okay? Because this is what makes this moist, but I'm gonna pick up the speed a little bit on this. And then, and we're going to do two cups of boiling water. This is my Insta-Hot faucet that puts out instant hot boiling water, so I don't have to heat up any water. I'm going to put this in there and let that get mixed up real good. Y'all, I made a mess all over this place. And it might seem kind of runny, 
this batter, but it's not. Okay? It is really, really good. Let me see. I may not need to add another. Let me do like a half a cup. That, you don't want this getting too runny on you. That's for sure. Because then you have a mess on your hands. An absolute mess. Y'all. So see, the consistency of this is pretty thin. It's a pretty thin batter. Alright, but that's alright. So now, um, let's go ahead. I didn't even have that on lockdown the whole time. Uh-oh. Let me just scrape this. Let's see, there's some kind of sitting on the bottom that's thicker and you got to make sure you get all your batter equally incorporated so it's not I might need to let this mix for a little bit longer which is totally fine and so let me go ahead and put this in here, lock it down, throw it on, and I'm going to clean up my mess. So I've got my two glass baking dishes here. I'm going to go ahead and spray them, and then we're going to put the batter inside the glass baking dishes evenly. I just have regular old Pam. There's plenty of other sprays out there that are actually probably better, but this is what I have right now. So I'm just gonna use what I have right now. And maybe even using butter would have probably been better. I just wanna get this done, to be, if I'm being honest. Okay, so let me rinse this with the boiling hot water. Yeah, I, I'm i actually kind of glad I did not add the two, two cups of hot water. Let's see. Oh, that got off easy. Um, because I think the batter would have been way too runny and it's you want it to be able to actually cook so rinse this off over here because i'm gonna need it for cookie dough next get that done next on the list get that there all right so see if you can see that it looks great all right, so I'm gonna do some in here. Doesn't that look amazing? Then some in here. Then, you know, you could probably just measure this out in a more accurate way. But I go by the rule of thumb of let's just eyeball it which is probably why I'm not the best baker in the world. But so far, nobody has complained about my desserts lately. So I'm like, we'll just keep going with that. We've got 
two really good cakes. They're a little off on the even part as far as distributing it goes, but I think this cake pan is shaped a little bit different than this one. So it's okay. We're just gonna go with it. Um, I've made this cake a couple of times now and it always comes out perfect. So I'm not really too worried about it. But what I have noticed lately is that one side of my oven heats hotter than the other. So I'm gonna shove them both over to the left side. So, okay, let's put them in the oven. to 35 minutes. So I'm gonna put it in here for 30 minutes next, and then we'll check on it and stick a toothpick in it and see if it comes out clean or not, and if it needs a little bit more time. All right, so let's go ahead and make our chocolate chip cookie dough. That's all the time we have for this video. Part two is coming right up where we'll do cookie dough and sushi bowls and more. See you soon.